Right now, people living near the Mississippi River are experiencing flooding levels not seen in more than two decades. How one community is banding together. Also, with Twitter's verification now gone, fact checking is becoming more important. This as an imposter account is pretending to be the city of Madison. And later, the first F 35 is coming to Madison this week. How many will ultimately be calling Truex Field home? Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. We begin with the news all Packers and Jets fans have been waiting for. After 18 years with the green and gold, Aaron Rodgers will be a New York Jet for the 2023. NFL season. Today, the Packers reportedly agreed to trade Rodgers to New York. In exchange for Rodgers, the Packers will be getting a second round pick and a conditional pick for 2024. The teams are also swapping this year's first round pick. Back in March during the Pat McAfee show, Rodgers said his intention was to play for the Jets, a request Packers president and CEO Mark Murphy said the team would honor. Coming up in sports, reporter Jordan Reed will have more on the trade and what it means for the Packers heading into this week's NFL draft. Residents on the Mississippi River are working to prevent damage to homes as the river continues to rise to levels not seen since 2001. Community members in Cassville are coming together to make sandbags there. Our Kyle Pazorski shows us how they're preparing for the river's crest. The quiet village of Cassville is usually only interrupted by the sound of a passing train. But over the past few days, a different sound has been in the air. Seeing the way the community gets together and just finds out what they need to do and does it is really great to see. The Mississippi River is rising in Cassville, rallying community members who have come to the rescue of homeowners affected by the flooding. Molly Roscombs is the village clerk there. It's been everyone. Uh, the entire community has been coming out to help. That help includes students from the middle and high schools, as well as countless volunteers who are no stranger to the flooding. People who have lived here a long time have been through it so they know. The most recent major flood event was in 2019. Before that, only two other years have been close to the current levels, both over 20 years ago. It does seem, you know, like uh, the last few years, we've had a few times when the river got high. So far, Grant County has provided more than 30,000 sandbags. They say the recent floods have prepared them for events like this. People pull, pull together and, and help each other through, and we've seen a lot of examples of that this week. For News 3 Now, I'm Kyle Pazorski. And farther north in Begley, the river stage there is set to break the 2001 mark. This year's flooding event will be second all-time, only behind one seen back in 1965. Let's check your first warned forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Well, additional rain would have a lot to do with the flooding, but uh, fortunately, the precipitation we're seeing, at least over tonight and into tomorrow, should be pretty light. Let's start out by taking a look at visible cloud track. We had sunshine this morning, and clear skies late last night allowed some of us to see the northern lights, but you can see those clouds building up this afternoon, and there have been a few light rain showers, mostly north and north northeast of Madison, although a few are popping up now across western Dane County from around Mount Horeb down toward Hollandale. Six-hour future track radar shows the possibility for a couple of scattered showers through the evening hours, and later on tonight they could even mix with a few flakes of snow as temperatures turn a little colder. High temperatures today, mid-50s over southwestern Wisconsin where there was a little more sunshine, but everybody else stayed in the 40s. Madison, 49 degrees, 47 in Juneau, only 45 in Watoma, and you can see temperatures now are mainly in the middle 40s from Madison to the northeast, still around 50 to the south and west, but across Dane County, temperatures range from 48 in Mount Horeb to 45 in Deerfield and 45 in Sun Prairie. Look for skies to be variably cloudy this evening, a slight chance for a shower, temperatures dropping into the lower 40s by late evening. Later on, I'll take a look at more rain chances and whether or not that could make the flooding situation worse later on in the newscast. Gary, thank you. Senator Tammy Baldwin is calling on military officers to answer questions about the Army's process for conducting prescribed burns. This after a wildfire burned thousands of acres in and around Fort McCoy earlier this month. Prior to that fire, Governor Evers had declared a state of emergency because of red flag warnings and extreme fire risk all around the state. While Fort McCoy officials have not yet shared an explanation for the cause of the fire, Shortly after the blaze began, Fort McCoy had prescribed burns planned for that day. In a letter to, that was sent to Army Secretary Christine Warmuth, Senator Baldwin writes, quote, it is imperative that we protect the areas both in and around our military installations and that the Department of Defense use all resources available to ensure appropriate risk mitigation when conducting operations that have a direct impact on the environment and communities. An official investigation is currently underway. Military officials have not said when they expect it to be completed. In Sun Prairie, crews responded to a gas station fire early this morning. It happened at a BP station on County Highway TT near the Cottage Grove Park and Ride. 
Crews left the scene after putting out the fire about 5.30. It's unclear what caused it. In the last few days, a random Twitter account is taking advantage of the new Twitter landscape to impersonate the city of Madison. This after Twitter removed the legacy blue check marks that signified they had verified the identities of certain accounts in favor of their Twitter blue service. Our Andrew Banstra has the story. In the new Twitter blue era, if you saw these two accounts, would you know which one the real city of Madison was? One of the big problems in Twitter has always been impersonation, and the, the blue chat marks were a way to allow users of Twitter to know that the tweets were coming from the name associated with the account. A random Twitter account is impersonating the city of Madison using their name, website, and logo, leading to confusion and misinformation. Now that the only way to get a check mark is to pay for it. So as a result, um, businesses, celebrities, Lots of organizations have had to deal with accounts that say they're them, but really they're actually just somebody having fun and just sending stuff up just to get attention. The city of Madison confirmed in a statement to News 3 Now that the account in question is not associated with the city. But without verification check marks to prove a celebrity or business is who they say they are, the average Twitter user could be fooled. Nowadays, though, the, the lines between what's real and what's parody are, are being blurred. Steve says that's why fact-checking is more important than ever. A great example of this happened on Monday morning when Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon's departures took over Twitter. I read both of those stories on Twitter, and then I immediately went to other multiple sources before I believed it. While many accounts like this one can be identified as satirical, it still leads to misinformation and creates mistrust on how we consume media. So that's why I say that you should not believe anything on Twitter because it could be parody, it could be satire, it could be fake news, it could be real news, and there's no way to tell the difference. And if you read something on Twitter that doesn't seem right or shocks you, Steve says you must verify its validity with multiple sources. A former Minnesota police officer who shot and killed a man is moving to Wisconsin. Today, Kimberly Potter was released from prison after serving 16 months of her two-year sentence for shooting Dante Wright during a 2021 traffic stop. Potter had said she mistook her gun for a taser. She will be on supervised release until December when her sentence expires. It's unclear where she will go in the state of Wisconsin. Potter also will not be able to serve as a police officer again. Grant County Sheriff's officials say a woman was taken to a hospital and later arrested after a crash with a semi near Lancaster. Emergency crews were called to Highway 129 about 5.45 a.m. Saturday for a report of a crash. Police say a 39-year-old Platteville woman was driving southbound when she took her eyes off the road, crossed the center line, and struck a northbound semi. The woman was arrested on four outstanding warrants. She was also cited for inattentive driving, operating left of center, failing to register a vehicle, displaying unauthorized registration, and not having insurance. The semi-driver was not injured. A FedEx truck collided with a train in Wauwatosa this morning. No injuries reported. A spokeswoman with Union Pacific says that collision happened just before 10 a.m. She says the train crew was not hurt. The FedEx driver was able to escape from the truck before the accident. Officials also say there were no spills of any kind as a result of that collision. The 115 fighter wing at Truax Field will be getting its first F-35 aircraft tomorrow. A private ceremony will be held to welcome that new jet. The Air Force chose Truax Field as the preferred place to house the aircraft back in 2017 over other locations. And while the move initially garnered praise from both sides of the political aisle, residents living near Truax have fought against the move, raising concerns about noise pollution. A total of 20 F-35A Lightning II aircraft will eventually make their way to Madison over the next year. UW-Madison opening up its new Bakke Recreation and Wellbeing Center today. The center features spaces dedicated to supporting well-being services, such as the Wolf Teaching Kitchen, restorative studios and rooms for massage therapy, peer wellness coaching, and meditation. We know mental health and physical health are areas that we need to help our students the most, and I think this building will help in that capacity, and I just hope that the students enjoy themselves and find that sense of belonging that they might be looking for. Group fitness classes and spaces such as the teaching kitchen, climbing and bouldering wall, sports simulators, the pool and additional programs will be open by this fall. Memberships are available for affiliates of UW-Madison as well as the community. After the break, a shrimp recall is being expanded. Plus, as the fentanyl crisis continues across the country, how some states are trying to prevent future deaths. Stay with us. These are the faces that smile so wide at the friends and staff who are by their side, where life is lived with a feeling of pride, 
on every bump of life's great ride that comes from the care that sweetens the air that lives in the house that angels built. Attic Angel Community, independent homes and four levels of assisted living built with the help of angels. When it's time to remodel your home, lean on the experts at Brothers Maine for all things appliances. As Madison and Janesville's local appliance authority since 1938, our experienced staff will make your project easy from concept to completion. Better than big box, Brothers Maine has a larger selection, lower prices, and professional advice to bring your vision to life. On time and on budget, from sales to install, we do it all. Feel great about your purchases and feel like family at Brothers Maine. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin, with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833 W-I-S-V-R-A-P. That's 833-947-8727. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. The fentanyl crisis has skyrocketed to the point that it is now a leading cause of death of Americans under 50. According to the CDC, nearly 70% of opioid overdose deaths in the U.S. are related to the powerful synthetic drug. And now some states are making test strips available in public spaces to help curb the crisis. Those strips have long been considered drug paraphernalia and have been illegal in many states. But since 2022, more and more states are decriminalizing them. I think for somebody who already is abusing drugs, the difference between having these strips and not having these strips is the opportunity to go to rehab versus be killed instantly. The American Medical Association has also advocated for the use of the strips as a tool to avoid fentanyl poisoning. Some state legislatures have decided not to decriminalize, with lawmakers concerned they could entice people to use illegal drugs. A new study shows dogs are pretty good at detecting COVID. Researchers in California trained two Labrador retrievers to sniff for volatile organic compounds on people's ankles. They brought them to 27 schools. Turns out the dogs detected 85 infections and ruled out more than 3,400 others, but the dogs also alerted to 383 false positives and missed 18 infections. According to the researchers, that's okay. The point is to be non-invasive and not replace antigen testing entirely. The company that makes Geisha shrimp is expanding a recall. The recall of medium shrimp now includes all four ounce cans distributed in most states since December. Kawasho Foods USA Incorporated says the affected shrimp might have been underprocessed, making it more susceptible to spoiling. You can head to the FDA's website for more information about that recall. Still ahead, Senator Ron Johnson gives his thoughts on former President Trump and if he'd support him in 2024. Also, police in Milton getting specialty book bags for children. Uh, they'll be able to help during traumatic events. Plus, could we see more rain or even snow tonight? Gary's back his complete forecast when we come back. Cheers. Cheers. To your big promotion. Thanks. And to your new house. I know. What? I guess you had to move fast in this market. Right? Best thing I did was get a pre-approval from Summit. Once I knew my budget, I only looked at homes I could make a serious offer on. And how's construction going on your place? One month left. Must be stressful. Actually, no. I'm working with Summit, too, and they've been great about answering all my questions and guiding me along. It's been easy. Whether you're building or buying a home, Summit Credit Union is here to help. Make a move in the most electrifying Honda vehicles yet. Like the CRV and Accord, with available hybrid powertrains designed for more responsive performance and more advanced tech, 
When you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2022 Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com Best Value Brand. Get moving and find the Honda for you. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. All right, team, we got a big project coming up. And it all starts with ordering promotional products. I'm on it. Four Imprint makes it easy to get the logo products you're looking for. The latest in apparel, drinkware, bags, high-tech items, and more. You can be certain of getting it right at 4imprint.com. Come on out. I'm on it. Four Imprint for certain. To everyone who appreciates a handcrafted meal, are you ready for a taste of Wisconsin? Butterburgers cooked fresh, just the way you like. The way you love. Definitely love. And our thick and creamy frozen custard, we make it for you all throughout the day. All day. All day, every day. Put it in the extra work and not cutting corners. It takes a little longer. But it's how we've always done it at Culver's. Because making your meal with care shows how much we care. From Wisconsin with love. This month, all Cortec water-resistant flooring is on sale at Surgenians. We offer the largest Cortec selection in Madison. Take advantage of unprecedented sale pricing with 12-month financing. Local, sustainable Surgenians. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. President Biden is expected to announce a re-election bid this week. Officials have been making final cuts to an official video that could be released as early as tomorrow. It may be an uphill battle, though. According to an NBC News poll yesterday, 70% say they don't think that President Biden should seek a second term. Among Democrats, 51% also feel that way. According to the poll, close to half of those questions say the president's age is a major concern and why they don't think the 80-year-old should run again. As for the GOP, former President Trump has a significant lead over other potential candidates for next year's presidential nomination. According to a new NBC poll, 46% would back Trump at the Republican primary next year. 31% chose Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. However, the poll also finds broad opposition to Trump's campaign among all adults, with 60% saying he should not run for the presidency. Meanwhile, a new poll shows that Florida Governor DeSantis and former President Trump are neck and neck in Wisconsin, with DeSantis now having a slight edge. That sets the stage for a possibly contentious Republican primary, one that Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin weighed in on today. The senator has been a key Trump ally during the former president's first term. At an event in Milwaukee today, Senator Johnson said he would support the former president if he was the party's nominee, saying, quote, that's what he's always done. First of all, he would never be convicted in the Senate. So I'm not sure we want to go through down that road again. I think Democrats have done that time and time again. It's not helpful. Um, I think you should be impeached in Mayorkas. If Anthony Blinken doesn't resign, he ought to be impeached as well. But those are two people I think the House should impeach. Senator Johnson went on to talk about the Supreme Court's decision to keep the abortion medication Mifepristone on the market. He said he had some concerns with the approval process of the drug, but broadly said he thinks Republicans need to lead on the issue. The Milton Police Department now equipped with backpacks meant to comfort children during crisis situations. They're called reach bags, and they're filled with new children's books and drawstring backpacks. First responders across Wisconsin use books from a reach bag to comfort children that they encounter in crisis situations. The books also serve to destroy extract the child from the source of the trauma. The children's books and backpacks are being delivered by Reach a Child, which is a Madison-based nonprofit. Every department that we support, and that's now over 300, they say we love these resources, but we couldn't afford them. We can't put them in our budget. So thank you to the community partners like the Milton Community Fund that are providing us the opportunity to bring these books and backpacks. And each of the six Milton squads get one bag. The department also received hundreds of additional children's books for community engagement purposes. Those across southern Wisconsin were again able to catch a glimpse of the northern lights last night. Here's a look at some of the photos viewers shared with us showing off the purple and green light display. We have more photos you can check out at channel3000.com. And if you'd like to share your photos, you can email them to us at tips at channel 3000 Dot com. We cannot shake the cool temperatures. Gary's back with his complete forecast. It was kind of chilly if you were out looking for the northern lights last night, but in order to see them, you need to have clear skies, and that might not be the case tonight. In fact, we've even got a few light showers, mainly north of Madison, although a few more are trying to pop up south and west of Madison. Some of that may not be reaching the ground, but a little wider radar perspective shows while there are rain showers in southern Wisconsin, there are snow showers or a mix up in the northern portion of the state, and it's possible that we could see a couple of flakes of snow mix in later tonight. 
tonight into tomorrow morning before they come to an end. You can see on six hour future track radar, maybe some flakes of snow starting to mix in north and east of Madison where temperatures are a little bit colder. We don't need any more precipitation, at least near the rivers. Uh, you can see the Mississippi River under flood warnings, basically from the Twin Cities all the way southward through Wisconsin, Illinois and Iowa. Uh, some areas are going to see major flooding from that, but also many rivers, including the Wisconsin River by Portage, the Wolf River up in northeastern Wisconsin, uh, also uh, with flood warnings and then the uh, up to the north up near Fargo, uh, North Dakota, the Red River. That's going to see some major flooding. Future track precipitation over the next seven days. Fortunately for us, generally amounts of rain that we should be able to handle about a half to three quarters of an inch of rain, not seeing a lot of thunderstorm activity where you could see heavier rains uh, pile up. So at this point, uh, that's good news, although some heavier showers are a possibility up to the north and even some snow up in far northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan. Three things you need to know in our forecast. Look for just a slight chance of precipitation tonight into tomorrow morning. Again, that could be a mix of rain and snow. Temperatures only in the 50s for highs, around 50 tomorrow and mid 50s on Wednesday for the middle part of the week. And then a little milder, high temperatures in the lower 60s for Thursday and Friday, but the rain chances come back later in the day on Friday and they're going to be around through the weekend. High temperature trend over the next 10 days. You can see below normal temperatures, a brief warm up for Thursday and Friday, back to below normal temperatures with the clouds and showers for the weekend into the early part of next week. And then once the sun returns, temperatures back up to around normal by the end of next week. And looking farther into the future, the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook continues for below normal temperatures through the first week of May. But the good news is from a precipitation standpoint, we're expecting below normal precipitation over much of the upper Midwest and the northeastern portion of the country. The area that needs rain out to the west will probably get some more with above normal precipitation expected there. As we check out our forecast for the night, look for a low of 36 in Middleton, 34 in Marshall and 36 in Oregon. Mainly cloudy skies, but there could be a brief rain or snow shower across the rest of southern Wisconsin. Low 36 in Janesville, 36 in Platteville and 36 in Lone Rock. For tomorrow, look for variably cloudy skies. If there is a rain or snow shower, the best chances will be in the morning with a high temperature of 50 degrees. Planning your night, look for just a spotty rain or snow shower. Temperatures mainly in the lower 40s through late evening, but then by 2 a.m. you can see we're in the upper 30s. That's when you could see a mix of rain and snow showers. But you can see how widely scattered they are. And by about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, most of those should be gone and skies should actually start to clear out. Our first warm 7 to 10 day forecast, again, that brief warm up Thursday and Friday, but then the rain moves back in and that'll keep us cool for the weekend into the early part of next week. It also be breezy as well, keeping a chill in the air. Sunshine by the end of the week gets our temperatures back up into the 60s. Things are almost finalized for Aaron Rodgers, but not quite. When we return, I'll break down the reported trade and all the picks that the Packers are getting. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Save big money with the 11% off everything at Menards. Get the top-of-the-line water heaters with Wi-Fi technology from Richmond. This hybrid electric heat pump water heater's energy efficiency will provide long-term savings. Get it now for just $13.78.96 after rebate. Soften your water and help reduce mineral buildup with Morton's 27,000-grain water softener. This water softener is an ideal choice for small to medium-sized households. Right now, just $3.99.96 at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Circle of Life at the Lion King. Experience the world's number one musical. Don't miss your chance to see The Lion King, one of the most awe-inspiring productions ever brought to life on stage. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at overture.org. How did Richard Bong shoot down 40 planes in World War II? He said he got so close, he couldn't miss. George uses AT&T for his internet and mobile service. Anthony has Spectrum One. What's the difference? With AT&T, George pays a lot more. I'm sorry, I, I do? AT&T internet costs $55. And AT&T Unlimited Extra Line costs $75. Plus monthly fees. Ouch. With Spectrum One, Anthony gets internet with fast and reliable speeds. Super fast. Advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced privacy and security. With Spectrum, I get security shield, blocking threats. And an unlimited mobile line with nationwide 5G. Service 
so reliable. All for $49.99 a month. Go to spectrum.com slash save more to see how much you can save. Or call us and we'll do it for you. With Spectrum One, Anthony is saving almost $100 a month. That's almost $1,200 in savings. I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum Internet for only $49.99 a month, plus free advanced Wi-Fi and a free unlimited mobile line. Visit spectrum.com slash save more or call 833-754-4999 today. Students from across the state meet in Madison to show off their skills in a variety of career fields. Tomorrow we have a preview of this unique and collaborative conference. It looks like this cooler than average temperatures will continue. We'll see how long it will last. Join us tomorrow between 4.30 and 7. One month ago, Aaron Rodgers made his intentions known on the Pat McAfee show that he wants to play for the Jets. And after weeks of trade talks between the Packers and the Jets, news broke today that the trade is officially happening. So who is getting what and when ESPN's Adam Schefter, who broke the news earlier today, says the Packers and Jets swapped first round picks this year. So the Pack is going to get the 13th overall pick along with a second round, a sixth round, and a conditional second round pick for 2024. Now that could become a first round pick if Rodgers plays 65% of the snaps in New York. The Jets are going to get Rodgers, the 15th overall pick this year, and a fifth round pick. Now here's the catch. The Packers GM Brian Gutekunst had a media availability not long after Schefter broke the news, where he said, well, things aren't finalized yet. Yes, the talks picked up five, six days ago, but there are some things that still need to be done going through it right so it's part of the job and um, I think it, whenever you've worked on something as long as we have here you're just hopeful that it can get done and everything can get you know squared away and um, and then I'm sure there'll be feelings after that you know I mean this draft thing is so consuming in some ways that it's um, it's my, obviously my favorite part of this but um, it's very consuming so it's just uh, I think right now it's just, just get through and and you know continue to, to accomplish the tasks that we need to accomplish. Minutes away from Game 4 tipping off in Miami, and Giannis is back in the starting lineup. Coach Bud says he's ready to go after missing two games against the Heat with that lower back contusion. Giannis took the court earlier today to do some warm-ups and shoot around with the team. Now, the Heat took the series lead after a double-digit win just a few nights ago. Tip-off for Game 4 is set for 6.30. And checking in with former Badger Joe Pavelski, he has missed the Stars' last two playoff games against the Wild due to a concussion. The latest reports from the Athletic are. He's making progress. He has resumed skating, but is unavailable for Game 5 tomorrow night. You sense Giannis felt he had to play tonight. They're kind of getting their backs against the wall here. Yeah, the so hopefully all goes well for the Bucks tonight yeah, and Giannis. Yes. Hopefully he's the Giannis we've come to love. Exactly. <laughs> Gary, final check of the forecast. Yeah, cloudy out there. Uh, maybe a couple of rain showers, but for the most part, uh, the southern part of the state, or at least area south of Madison, staying dry. There's a live view from the Platteville Queen Bee Radio Sky Camp, but you can see a few sprinkles trying to show up south and west of Madison. The showers that are reaching the ground are more to the north and to the east. And six-hour future track radar may be starting to show a few flakes of snow mixed in as well. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we will be back here tonight at 10.